Welcome to my channel, Steve of the Window Cleaner. I've been gone for a month, taking work off for a month, haven't uploaded for a month. It's been very nice and relaxing, but it's time to get back to it. It's our last day here in the Philippines. We're currently in uh, Magaba. Magaba, Philippines, a small province out of side of Pandan. And uh, we take our adventure back to Colorado today. So once we get back to Colorado, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of taking a month off from work. First, we gotta make our adventure home. So we'll see you in Colorado. So we are back after taking a month off from work and going to the Philippines for three weeks and we went from 90 degree weather to pretty much a blizzard here. We got home on Thursday evening and the jet lag is killing us. The jet lag is for real. We've never taken a vacation. I haven't. You have. You've gone to Australia. But I've never taken a vacation really outside of uh, the U.S. time zone. We've gone to Mexico and stuff, but nothing much else. But um, so we're going to talk about kind of the pros and cons of taking a month off from work. Uh, vacation was overall great. Um, we really went to like a we went to a lot of different areas of the Philippines. Um, areas that were very like third world areas that were definitely what well, you could kind of say like Americanized and that was Boracay which was the area that had like the most hotels but like hotels in the Philippines are quite different than what you expect for like hotels over here a lot of the places we stayed in I mean were like you rent a room with a bathroom yeah you just rent a room with a bathroom and it's very small like if you were to walk into it and not know from her dad lives over there, so he, he's used to it and like, you know, Nancy made us wear, but our first room for me was like, screw this, I want to <laughs> go home. Because basically, toilet-wise is not the same as here. Um, not that it's disgusting, but some of the times, basically the same thing that you use to like spray down your dishes, you use to spray your butt to get it clean. And it's curled up on a little spigot next to the toilet. Or sometimes you go into a place and you have like a little cup to dunk into a bucket of water and run down the back of your butt to get your butt clean. <laughs> but I think one of the probably the biggest cons of not working for a month was for Alex. Um, since I'm an owner, I, I still I still get paid for that time gone, which makes it great. Um, for Alex, she's under the same rules as everybody else that worked for us. We give them like a week of paid vacation after a year and then two weeks paid after two years. She still got her one year, so that was kind of the part that sucked. But financially, going to the Philippines was great because it really didn't cost us that much. Now know this, I almost canceled this trip like quite a few times because us buying a home this year was all done after planning this trip and we were really planning on not spending a whole lot of money because we were planning on saving for a home. So we got back and forth on this vacation many, many times. And it wound up only costing us under, right about 3,000 for going out to for three weeks. And that was with plane tickets, uh, everything. So that, that was like a pro and a con as far as we really didn't spend as much as we think. I mean, if you go spend three weeks in Hawaii, I mean, I think you're well gonna spend over, over $10,000. 
but um, it was really fun. Uh, crashed a scooter, and as it crashed, I mean slowly tipped it over. Uh, I never rode on a scooter before, and oh man, it was just not good. Did it on my like the, the driving in the Philippines is so much different than here. I mean, it, it's one lane each way. You go through the towns, and there's these things called trikes, which are these motorcycles attached to like a sidecar, all welded together. They're kind of sketchy, but it all works. I mean, there's a lot of, yeah, they have a great system. It's all honking horns and going right around people. There's bicycles, scooters, motorcycles, cars, buses flying around each other. I mean, it took a while to get used to. Learn how to paddleboard. I fell off like three or four times at the beginning. Alex was a pro. Like four or five. Well, you know, <laughs> who's counting? I was. <laughs> <laughs> that was really fun. And like the beaches at Barakai were awesome. The water was super clear. Um, just overpopulated. Just really overpopulated. It's a, it's a small island off of the island that we stayed at for a good amount of time there where a lot of people from China and Europeans come. We only met um, two other people there from America in our three nights of staying there. But there at Barakai, a lot of the locals cannot come there. So people who already live there can be on the island, but for people that, you know, Filipinos, they don't even allow them over there because they basically look at it as like a tourist destination and they try to keep it only to tourists who are gonna make money and they're slowly like kind of redoing this whole entire area. So that was a really big highlight of the trip. And we hiked to an awesome, awesome waterfall. And that was another really cool thing. We hiked a good trail up like an hour to this beautiful waterfall. We could climb behind it, um, swim in the water. I mean, that was really cool. Slide down the rocks. That was a lot of fun. Um, I definitely think one of the, the cons to it was being gone that long you really start missing home. It was the first trip in a long time where I really wanted to get home by the end of it. I think you did too. Yeah, we missed our dogs. Yeah. The house. Yeah. Our bed. Yeah. And then like a pro of it was that seeing how the Filipino people live, most of them, I mean, they live in, you know, what we would consider like shacks, like, you know, brick that's just been built up. Nothing's very straight. Rebar out the top tin roofs or straw roofs but they're all really really happy like I know that seems cliche to talk about it's like oh you know we're so thankful and blessed for what we have but really after going there that was my first experience of seeing that in person so it gave me a good perspective Alex has kind of seen it but you know it's a good um, good to see that every once in a while they appreciate like what you have and I think that was a big pro of the trip I don't think I would want to take a month off and spend it at home I think that would be... Um, you get bored. Yeah, very, very boring. I mean, we spent a good week here off before we even left. And even by that, we were just getting bored. Um, when I'm home, I like to work. And, you know, a three-day weekend's nice here and there. But I even find three-day weekends by the third day. It's kind of like, all right, well, what am I doing? It's fun to make YouTube videos, but it's fun to do other things too, like interact with society. So our trip, our journey there... Our journey there and our journey home was a major con. Yeah. It freaking sucked. Um, going there took us over 24 hours. Um, I think it sucked for us because we're just not used to traveling. To people who are used to traveling all the time, I bet you you're fine with it. But for us, going there, we had one of our flights, which was from LA to Hong Kong, was 16 hours. And I messed up in that around Christmas time I tried to cancel the flights and I was going online looking at everything and it had like a button that said cancel flights but I figured if I pushed on that it would go to like a page that would you know are you sure here's the things that are gonna happen if you do it nope press the button and it canceled the whole trip and you can't get your money back on these trips unless you have like a death or a severe illness or if you're um, departure times switched by over 60 minutes and we didn't have that and that was basically because financially we we're just kind of like 
that isn't the, really the best option. We are still paying rent at our apartment until uh, April, and we moved out of there in October because when we found the home we we're at now, it was kind of like, let's just do it, and it just worked out perfectly, or we were really considering leaving Colorado at a certain time. A really big pro from it was taking time off of YouTube, um, taking time away from that. Uh, I've been going very hard at it for a while. Um, like you've seen maybe on like Luke's vids and stuff like that, it does put a strain, even like on our relationship at times. Like, I get so many questions from a lot of people, um, and I really try to answer them all. And sometimes it becomes a lot because not only do I do videos for my own channel, but over time I've done videos for Window Clean Resource, done some videos for Tucker, and it becomes a lot. And then you're trying also to, you know, manage your work, um, just doing your eight to five every day, and then coming home, dealing with questions, doing billing. And that was like a major pro for me was just like getting away from everything. And so I kind of pushed it hard through like November, December, and January, but then it was just so nice to take that time off and to come back and feel kind of refreshed, wanting to do videos again. I felt like I was starting to get a little bit lazy with some of my videos and not put in the effort that I wanted to because I was just getting tired. You gotta, you gotta have breaks sometimes, and I think that also relates to work. Like, you know, when we go through school as kids, it's you always get that summer break and it's nice to be able to have a small business and to be able to be an owner where you can take that time off and I hope that continues through life that we get to do that and maybe sometime in the future we don't get to do that but we also took advantage of this situation um, to be able to do a trip like this because there are areas of this vacation where you would not want to travel like with your kids like, like the most most of the trip. Yeah, most of the trip. I mean, um, these trikes you ride around in, the taxis are crazy drivers. Just the, the areas where you would be sleeping and staying and stuff, it's just not very kid-friendly. Um, trying to bathe your kid would be hard. Um, especially if you had more than one kid. Trying just to feed everybody make sure that they're happy i mean the food there is is not different but it is more simple it's sometimes harder to trust it because some of the best restaurants are like these shack looking places yeah i mean where cats were running around your feet dogs with that probably had <laughs> 10 litters were sitting there looking at you like waiting for food um we were at one place in manila where literally I oh. saw a cat get a mouse and had a mouse it in its mouth. It wasn't a mouse. A rat. It was a rat. It was a rat. <laughs> it was a huge yeah. rat. <laughs> in its mouth. And like I just ate in... I forget what we had there. It was a while it ago. It was like a weird bowl thing wrapped in a bowl. Yeah. I mean weird. you eat a lot of pork, a lot of... Chicken. Chicken. And fish. The chickens aren't as big. The beef there you don't want to eat. I mean, you see the cows and you see, and they're just nothing like the cows here in America. They're not all pumped full of uh, steroids or whatever. <laughs> but then, you know, the cool thing is, is there's cats and dogs and chickens and all these animals run around all the time. So every time like you're walking in the villagers or walking from where we stayed with her dad, you know, there would just be cats and dogs like randomly in the streets and a bunch of roosters. Um that part it was just cool as far as i never grew up on a farm or anything like that so i didn't experience the rooster thing unless that's just a that never really actually happens and then another thing that was a con of uh was it as i got sick for probably the whole time pretty much then figured out by the end of the trip i was allergic to mangoes so that sucked well, i got a, probably a cold yeah, you got a cold baby. from the airplane, so that sucks. So then, luckily, we had antibiotics that we brought, so she was okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it took us a week just to kind of get going, and then by that time, you know, it was just kind of hang out, got to sleep a lot. That was nice. Got a lot of good rest. Definitely feel fatter because we didn't work out for like we pretty much didn't work out for a month. That's very unlike us. Like we, we like to go to the gym. 
So that was kind of a shitty part, but it was like really nice to like give your body a break. My shoulder's been hurting, my back's been hurting really bad, and it was nice that everything feels good, which everything will probably feel like shit in a month or in a week. But um, we're excited to get back to work. I'm excited to get back to work. I don't think you're Alex, not. you're not excited to get back to work. It's too cold. It's too cold. I'm excited to get this season rolling and uh, really get into the warm season, be able to put shorts on again. This next, like, summer or kind of late spring, summer, fall, I'm going to be doing a long series on Window Clean Resources channel all about water fed pole and every single little piece of it. And it's really going to be geared towards beginners. Um, we are going to start from the basics, basics, and work all the way through to the advanced stuff about water fed pole. But I think it will be really, really great. And it's just going to be basically water fed pole class of window crane resource. I put out one video, but uh, with them already, but I kind of wanted to go back, change some things, and kind of do it a different way. So look for that on our own channel here. We'll keep continuing with, well, my channel. Yes, yeah, my channel. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep continuing with like with great content. Uh, there's few giveaways coming up, and also there's a giveaway in this video, a uh, very random giveaway. But um, if you would like to enter to win a Edurey Hybrid Water Fed Pole Brush, I'm going to be giving that away. I received that from someone at the uh, convention, a uh, very nice gentleman named Scott. I used it a couple times. I just use so many more Tucker brushes and stuff like that. I'd like to give it away to someone else who can use it and um yeah i mean why not give it away we've been been very hashtag blessed in that uh team up with community stores got to try out a lot of different things and they have a lot of stock of different stuff and uh no reason not to give back to you guys so you guys can click that link it'll be the gleam link in the description uh just enter that if you're a water fed pole guy if you're not a water fed pole guy don't enter that competition if you're a traditional guy only there will be squeegees given away in the future here just like i've always been doing but i always like to just do a giveaway every once in a while just to give back to all you guys so uh walter your wagtail high flyer is going to be on the way as well we're going to go work out because we haven't worked out in a month so we're at the gym right now so that's it for this video thank you for joining us i hope you've enjoyed all the clips that i've put in here of the philippines it was an awesome trip. And, it was a uh, very good trip. Yeah, it was good. So we'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one, and we'll see you later.